The Art of Confessing Our Sins, Psalms 51, 1 through 19, Part 1 of 2. Introduction Do you remember the joy and the relief you experienced when you were baptized? A. Knowing that your sins had been washed away by the blood of Christ. B. Knowing that you then stood before God, holy, without blame. Wouldn't it be great to experience that same joy and relief time and again? 2. There is no reason why you cannot. a. Even though you may have sinned terribly after your baptism. b. For God has made provision whereby we can enjoy the continual cleansing of the blood of Christ. 3. Not by being baptized again and again but by confessing our sins to God, 1 John 1, 9. B. For God who is faithful and just has promised to forgive our sins. Just as we are raised from the grave of baptism cleansed by the blood of Jesus, we can rise from our prayers knowing that we have been cleansed from all unrighteousness. 4. The key is to confess our sins. A. But how does one do that effectively? B. There are some things to keep in mind as we confess our sins. 5. In Psalms 51, we have what David wrote after he was guilty of adultery with Bathsheba. A. He provides an example of how one should confess their sins to God. B. He provides what I like to call the art of confessing our sins. How should one go about confessing their sins to God? From the example of David, a good place to begin is Appeal to God's mercy and love, 1 and 2. A. Note the basis of David's plea for forgiveness. A. According to your loving kindness. 2. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. David sought forgiveness based upon God's loving kindness and tender mercies. B. The pardon we seek should have as its basis 1. Not in merit or worthiness of man. 2. But in the goodness and grace of God. C. As we seek washing and cleansing from our sins, 1. Don't base our appeal on our past accomplishments. a. How much we have done for the Lord. b. How long we have been a member of His church. 2. But upon the goodness and mercy of God. a. Appeal to His mercy and grace. b. Knowing that He is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Psalms 103, 8-10 Remember the parable of the Pharisee and the publican, Luke 18, 9-14. As we seek forgiveness, we must, of course, acknowledge our sins to God, 3 and 4. A. Note how David acknowledged his sin. 1. He did not try to hide it. My sin is ever before me. 2. He admitted that it was a sin against God himself. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight. A. While it's true he had sinned against Bathsheba, Uriah his own wife. B. David knew that it was ultimately against God himself. 3. He accepted the condemnation of God against him. A. That God was both just and blame, blameless in judging him. And B be as God did when he sent Nathan to condemn him. B. As we confess our sins, 1. Appreciate that this is the key to receiving God's grace. 1 John 1, 9. 2. Acknowledge the sin. While we may at times simply confess to be sinners, it never hurts to actually mention the sin for which we seek forgiveness. 3. Understand that all sin is ultimately a sin against God himself. 4. 
don't fault god his word or his messengers when we are exposed and condemned for our sins as we confess our sins there is more that we should bear in mind from david we learn that we should also understand where we are and where god wants us five and six a until forgiven one is deep in sin one using hyperbole is common in poetic language david describes the depravity in which he finds himself two he is not trying to escape responsibility by saying he was born that way only that he knows he is utterly sinful b but god desires much more one david knew what that god wanted a truth in the inward parts b wisdom in the hidden parts again figuratively hyperbole illustrating that truth and wisdom are to be pervasive as sin had been two david knew that god desired to provide more than just forgiveness he also desires a total restoration with understanding and wisdom on our part b that we be equipped for faithful service part one of two